Welcome back to the Whiskey Couch with me, Gustav Miller, as your host. Today's whiskey is the second one in a short series that I'm doing on Nikka Japanese whiskies. And for today, yesterday I reviewed the Nikka Pure Malt Black. And today I'm reviewing the Nikka Pure Malt Red. Pure Malt Red comes in a very small... 500 milliliter bottle and a square gift box like this. Nikka, of course, was uh, established in 1934 by Masataka Taketsura, I think, was his name. After which, the first Nikka whiskey was launched in 1940, six years later. Nikka is owned by the Nikka Whiskey Distilling company and it's got its headquarters in Tokyo, Japan. It owns quite a number of uh, whiskey related facilities including the Yochi distillery which is way up in the north. If you look at the Japanese map here then the Yochi distillery way up in the north there and also the Miyagiku distillery a little bit further to the south and this is what they look like the Yochi distillery covered in snow and then the Miyagiku distillery in the mountainous forest area a little bit further to the south. This particular whiskey is a pure malt. Some people call it a blended malt or a vatted malt which means that it's got only single malt whiskies and no single grain whiskies. This one has got single malt whiskies from the Miyagiku distillery and also the Yochi distillery, but mainly the Miyagiku distillery, blended together to give you this pure malt whiskey, bottled at 43%, pretty standard, with an old gold color. No information about chill filtration or coloring added. Pure Malt Red by Nika. It is definitely more fruity than the Pure Malt Black, which I did yesterday. It's a no age statement whiskey and you can pick it up on the nose, the freshness, the youthfulness. Fruity. There's a little bit of an alcohol hint on the nose and some vanilla with the fruitiness. It's got a beautiful nose, some nuts and honey and the maltiness as a constant sort of foundation of the of this nose. There's some oak to oak wood and also an earthy component to the nose of this whiskey. Mmm. Oily, malty. On the palate some sweet fruit but definitely a bitter note. Bitter marmalade note balancing the whole palate with some roasted nuts in between there. Caramel. Yeah, it's a light whiskey. Oak spices and citrus marmalade there. It's got a medium long finish. Light, easy drinking whiskey. Mm. But the sweet marmalade balancing everything. I would say in a nutshell, it's a light, fruity, malt with a hint of citrus marmalade. I would say in a nutshell that's what this whiskey is all about. But I've added a few drops of water and we will see what what happens with a few drops. Okay. 
With a few drops of water, there's less fruit and more of a vanilla toffee that now appears on the nose. <clears throat> yeah, and on the palate, with a few drops of water, it's just more elegant and, and easier to drink. For me, this one is better than the Pure Malt Black, personally. Better whiskey than the Pure Malt Black. I would prefer the red so far in this series. I would go for that. But still very expensive for 500 milliliters, uh, depending on where you buy it in the UK, be around sort of 50, 60 pounds. And here in South Africa, around 800 South African Rand. So a more fruity whiskey, in a nutshell, malty, with that hint of marmalade. If you want to pair this whiskey with a food snack, then I would recommend connecting with the fruitiness or the citrusy or the malty notes in this whiskey. I have chosen for today a strawberry wafer stick. Strawberry wafer stick in here. And I'm doing that, the wafer, because of the maltiness, I'm expecting that the wafer will connect with the maltiness and that the strawberry flavor will connect with the fruitiness. But you can also try something like a Jaffa cake covered with a thin layer of chocolate and citrus orange or a Swedish cheese like a Gouda cheese on crackers will also work well with this whiskey. Let's try the strawberry wafer. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Very fruity, very light, light whiskey, light food pairing. And it absolutely does the trick. This is actually quite good. I would give this whiskey closer to 80 out of 100 compared to the 70s for the black. Yeah, somewhere in the 80s for this whiskey, but the pairing makes it a very enjoyable experience. I would give this pairing a 4 out of 5 pairing experience. Wonderful. Thank you for watching. Remember to share this video with your friends and I'll see you again tomorrow. More whiskey tasting, whiskey reviews and whiskey and food pairings to come. Cheers.